Right, so as soon as you enter uh, Beast Makers, you basically go around this hut and go and get the gems entering it from the back of Terrace Village. Uh, you don't need to worry about anything that's over there. You can basically make it that. What you do is you basically here, flip, jump, charge round. That sort that jump is sort of similar to um, the Cliff Town jump round. So uh, if you want to practice that. It's the exact same sort of thing you're doing, just you're not doing it as sharp of a turn, basically. And you don't really have to, you know, use the camera in that. DGFSP. I've never heard of that. Hey, Chef. Thanks for the good luck. Right. And then as soon as you enter a level, basically, you're just kind of following this route, getting all these enemies as soon as you, you know, you follow your path with these big norks as soon as you flame them, jump up to get their gem nice and quick and then basically I'll, I'll try and explain what happens, you know afterwards from board onwards so basically just follow on how this route sort of goes make sure to keep quick <coughs> flame, jump, bonk bonk, flame, jump didn't get that gem but you get the picture because game's been Charge that guy, flame, try not to get zapped. Charge through, bonk, bonk, bonk. Flame jump, charge the guy, charge this guy, flame, jump the big guy, bonk. And then if you're lucky, force pigeon over to Claude, all right? And I'll play through Claude just because, you know, I'll explain the next bit. There's the word, oh, DGFSP. Right, so. I'm kind of gonna be bypassing some of these cycles. You've meant to be going through them nice and quick. But as soon so as soon as you get to this bit, jump over this um electric pad, flame firework that's on your right, that's on the bottom here, charge into the guy that's on the side, get the um chest that's on your left, and then as soon as you can try and jump over the side. Again, it's a nice easy jump in 30, a little bit tricky in 60. Get the um chest this at the top up there don't get the firework that's on that section you get the firework which is on that section up there and then you charge down get this guy before he zaps the pad and then you kind of have to hope for a perfect cycle going all the way up along again what a few what a few runners tend to forget is again cycles are really important and terrace village is one of those levels where you know trying to get the right cycle might you know make or break a good momentum throughout the whole throughout the whole level so basically follow along this route here, so charge, flame, charge that guy, get these chests, up around here. When you're going to do this jump, you charge and then jump and then glide at the very top. So charge, jump, glide, that. Probably even practice going back and forth between here. It's actually a harder jump to do in OG. Um, but in Reignited, this actually is quite a nice jump. And it's probably a little bit more difficult in um, in 60, but it's not too bad. Forget about those one gems. Come up around here. Charge into these. Come up here. Jump up. I generally flame these two. Get sparks to home that one. Flame this one. Come up here. Or you can even bonk into that and jump. Probably a little bit quicker if you can get that right. Forget about that firework. Flame this firework. Charge. Jump down. Bang onto that. Um, that mark. <laughs> <laughs> and then get those guys up there. So you got this firework chest that's Invisible chest. Sorry, that's uh, exploded now again timing for this is very crucial sparks will get that fodder So what I generally do is I collect these gems here flame that big nork let his gem drop Sparks will then get that fodder and I then charge round to get the green gem and the five gem that's at the corner And as soon as that done and uh, that's done uh, try and get back onto electricity pat and then see if you can carry on with like those cycles along there uh, Again, the best thing to do here is timing. Uh, I highly recommend watching um, the top runs to kind of get a, an understanding of how Smooth the cycle can be. I don't know if my world record run probably has it, but just Keeping an eye on cycles. So what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go from here. So flame Sparks will get the fodder up around here flame jump I'll let that guy self a cycle, then charge on here. Generally, what will happen, if you can get perfect cycle, 
you can get perfect cycle, this pad, this pad, and this pad will all be at the same pace. So what will happen is they will all zap at the same time. You can flame this guy, run quick, charge into those two, flame. He would kind of set off, but then be tearing at the end of his cycle. You can then flame this guy, then charge into him. That's typically perfect cycle. Get Cyprin, skip Cyprin's animation, bonk, bonk, charge into this guy, flame this guy as you turn round. You've probably practiced that movement, so flame, charge, and as you can see, camera sort of turns round as you charge there. Again, just like an OG. Don't need to even um, use the analog stick for that when you turn around there. Then as soon as you get down here, you can charge straight down, point into that. So what what the weird thing is with these spring chests is you can technically charge into them without getting a, like a knockoff bonk um, and like still let them set off. So what you can do is like charge bonk like that. That's quite quick actually. I'd say it's probably quicker than flaming. I just think flaming's a bit safe. So yep, you come down, up, charge up from that one, charge down to here. Try and get this Nork here, jump down, and then try and see if you can get all these Norks in one go, because they get quite good gems. As soon as that's done, you can then exit level. Highly recommend, at this point, have yellow sparks. If you don't have yellow spark. if it's blue sparks, there is a fodder just outside of the level that you can get. Uh, if you're green sparks, not a massive problem, but it might cause a little bit of a problem when going into Misty Bog. Which, if that's the case, if you don't have sparks at this point onwards, you get green sparks coming out, but then I would recommend for a, for a bit of, you know, to make sure to go safe going into the level, I would uh, death abuse in Wild Flight. And yet, and Tosa Cat is exactly right, you don't have to wait for sparks to eat that butterfly. You can literally, as soon as he starts whirling around, you can exit level. He does that, you can do that for a lot of things. If he's collecting the fodder, as soon as you're kind of moving into the next, you're going through an animation, like going through a portal, um, you can get, you can get Spark to like, regen through that as well. So then turn around, get Bruno here. Oh, what did T-Cat say there? Also you have save and quit and starve Misty Bog and reset Sparks too. That's also a very good idea. That's also uh, a possibility to do. Um, if you're not a fan of menuing, though, then obviously the um, the wild flight idea is also a you know, bit of a nice. So as soon as you've done that, so you got Boris, Boris, Bruno. Now, I know that different runners have different ways about doing this, but this is how I go about doing it. So again, if you're on blue sparks, I'd suggest charging this chicken here, or green sparks. If you're yellow sparks, you can ignore him. Go up across here, flame the first one, go right in front of that one and charge it. There is probably a better way around doing that. Uh, TCAT, if you have an alternative, or if you know of an alternative, put up in chat and then obviously read what he says there. Um, and then from there on, you go over to the ball, flame the ball, get his gem and try and avoid the second ball. Flame, get those two gems there, get this. try and avoid this, this boar there. And then when you're at the back, beware, there's a boar is ready to snipe you at the back of that. So what you can do is you jump charge, go around, flame, jump as soon as he dies, because his gem then, you know, hangs in the air. And then you collect all the gems that's in there and all of the gems that's in the chests in there. And that's, that, to get it all nice and smooth, takes a bit of practicing with platforming. So again, after a lot of attempts and practices, that would be nice and consistent. And as soon as you've done that, forget about Cletus who's here. You then flame these two here and then jump down here. Right? So, around through here. So, what you would do is flame, jump to get that gem, charge around. Sometimes there's a one gem there that might not home because it's awkward, which is fine. Then you get to this point, charge straight forward, get those. 90 degrees to the left on that analog sticking, and then you can easily, like, charge across and get. Practice that move. Cross there, <coughs> 90 degrees, charge across. Then come out, flame, flame, flame. Especially from that point, because you know you can spay the flame to get both of those there. And jump down it. Well, oh, and there, out bonking. I then flame this, let sparks to home those, and then go into wild flight. Now, wild flight, notorious flight. 
My least favourite. Is it your favourite light? I really like it. You really like it? I, yeah. It's, it's, it's not my favourite, though. Yeah, it's, it's the quickest flight in this game, and I think it's the quickest in OG as well. But again, it's really high risk, high reward, because you have to stay really close to the water, trying to make sure that things don't get in your way. There are, um, be careful of the archways in Reignited because their shrapnel has a hitbox that might knock Spyro and there's a bit that's on this bit coming up here which can be a massive problem you really don't want to get. Just like that happened there. I had a bit of a uh, shrapnel interaction which try and avoid as best as you can. Um, you might even get like a little proxy knock. Probably like a momentum. Again with flights. Nail down the route, practice, practice, practice. It's what I highly recommend. There is an alternative route to this, um, which I think is what I used to do back on OG. But this is the fastest here. Then you can get animation skip from like. Again, Wild Flight's a really quick flight. If you can get it down to at least sub one minute, that's, you know, it's quite nice and pace. And I'd say aim for about 3,875 gems around here. And it's coming out. Whirlwind. Ecletus. Now, you don't need to flame this boar at all because he automatically dies as you come out of Misty Bog. And then you head into Misty Bog. Which actually is another thing that's consistent with OG, funnily enough. Isn't that right? Hmm? Um... The, the boar that dies just outside. <laughs> boar that dies at just out of, Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah outside of Misty Bog. Way. That's quite clever there. Right, and as soon as you arrive in, I like to turn the camera 90 degrees to face towards the chicken and then charge straight into the chicken. 90 degrees again, and then you can start heading into the section where all the five gems are. So, as you can see, I'm back to Yellow Sparks just because with Misty Bog. Yellow Sparks is probably the safest bet. Also, you will need Sparks at least once here to damage. So, what you're going to do is you're going to glide across here. You can use Sparks either once or twice to get to that rock. As soon as you get to the rock, jump and glide and you get across over to that bottom section. When you get to the bottom section, make sure to flame those boars as quick as you can. Because they will, aim they will attempt to snipe you as quick as you can. So what you do when you get down there, try and see if you can get behind both of them and flame around. I'll give that a go right now. So fight across here, jump, get to the rock here because this is actually standable. And then you know, jump, glide, get on round. See, so yeah, I got one, but I missed one. But if you can, what I generally try and do is see if you can do a flame and then spay it round really quick. That's one thing that's really nice about um, that reignite. You can get spiked from spin around nice and quick and do fast play really really helpful so with that what i then do is get those two gems charge these norts go across get that 10 gem bonk up the stair and get bubba then 90 degrees turn get to this point 90 degrees turn again and then you can see you're like directly in front of these chests if you're a little bit in front from here you probably get them like automatically sniped them ah. then you can either do a jump glide from here but i like to go up here for a little bit of extra height then charge across from here to get up to this bit. Bonk, 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 bonk. Did I mention that bonks is the quickest way of getting upstairs? I probably didn't in my pre in previous part. So you get all of those gems along here. You jump across here. Fly across here. And again, regular platforming. Going across your route. Charge, bang, 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 bang. Bonk, bonk. Charge along these. Snap the camera to the back of Spyro along these and then flame both of those together. Then turn around 90 degrees, flame again. Then what I do here, now you can go along this way and I think that's probably a little bit quicker because you then charge across all of those chests. I go this way just because I've been doing that most of my time and it's a bit comfortable. So what I do is I go across, glide down here, charge to land on that chest and then flame across and get those two gems to home. Now. These frogs, oh, frogs, frogs in this game are a pain in the butt. But what I would do is if any of them get in the way, flame as quick as you can if they get in the way. But the one that's over hovering around those chests there, if you can try and get him along those chests, 
you know, that'll be a nice little Mac 5 gems. You don't need to get all of them, but they're good gem count. They're 5 gems. So if you can try and get at least one or two, that'll be quite ideal. So what I would do is charge across the chest that's directly in front of me. Go across those fan chests over there. Flame those because they've got 5 gems in them. Get those. Maybe get a frog or two. And then start heading towards uh, the trees that's over here. Get the gems that's behind this wall. And then head up to Roscoe. And then I'll stop at Roscoe. Charge across here. Frogging away. Jump. You can do exactly that. That's another way to try and get them. Then the other way is if you get close enough to flame. Just about that point there. Flame there. Or maybe, you know. That was nice and easy. If you wanted to give that a go, that probably might even be worth it. Because you get, you know, some five gems there. Then with these, you know, trees. Flame and jump to get their gem. I'd like to get these gems here. Flame. Get that gem there. And then get Roscoe. As soon as you get Roscoe, skip his animation, turn, snap the camera back, and face towards these two. Now, what I like to do is flame the boar, charge the Norka as soon as you can, wherever they're standing, basically. Um, only worry about the five gems as soon as they're both gone, because personally, I like to fill the hazards first, and then collectibles. You know, that's like a that's, that's just my way about it. If you want to play risky, play risky. Riskier, you know, potentially the, the quicker. So what I do is go across here. Forward, then change. Go from there and then charge directly forward into that Nork. And then I'll start heading towards this way. And then you can charge across, glide over to the edge of there. And then carry on those Norks along all of there. Get to that Nork. Get all of the chests along there. Get as many gems as you can getting up there. And then obviously follow down the route. Then get all the gems that's down in the bottom section until you get to Zeke and you end level. So I'll try and do that in one second, right? Jump, glide, charge, 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 collect these gems, charge, 90 degrees, charge, 90 degrees again. As you can see, 90 degrees to the left and then the other is 90 degrees to the right. Charge, charge, <laughs> then get these gems and charge all the way down here. Knocks right in front of you, so get on snap down onto him. Then from here, I like to go at the 90 degrees. If you think it's a little bit easier, snap the camera back. Charge, flame, jump, flame, jump, charge, charge, flame, flame. And here you are. Um, I'd say around about 300 to 315 to 325 gems around here. I admit, I think I've probably over collected a little bit because of those frogs, but it's not a problem. Then you get Zeke, skip Zeke, and as soon as you've done him, exit level. Whew. And then you'll now be en route to treetops. 90 degrees is direct left or right, no. So the from that section, it's left and then charge across, and then it's 90 degrees directly right again. It's both, Farnia, in a way. So it's, it's, as you would have saw there, that boar automatically died, I got his gem. Then what I do is charge over to here, flame this boar. I don't really care about those two gems. If you want to get them, go get them. Um, come up along here, get that 10 gem. Hopefully at this point as well, I try and go for a green sparks. If you have blue sparks, you've had probably quite a good misty bog, or you may have, you know, a death and got, you know, yellow sparks again. If you had yellow sparks there, then, you know, keep on going. If you've run out, if you don't have sparks at that point, there is a bit of fodder that's just past the red gems that's around the corner. Um, which you can go for, get the red gems and carry on. So you kind of feel like you're a little bit, you know, collecting gems on the way. So with this, I'm just going to carry on my route until I get to Lyle. Because Lyle is where we've got our first of Troublesome 2. So get those two, get in spay of that flame. Go up along here, flame him, jump to get his gem. Jump up along here, charge, 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 charge. Get the key, but we might not need it in a moment. Get these two gems. Jump up along here, charge, charge. So with these two, by the way, so I charge into the first one and then jump and then land on the second one's head because if you don't like attempt that, you might get his banana and his banana may knock you off and uh, have to restart treetops all over again. Now, and then charge these two, jump up to here and get to Lyle. Now with Lyle, what I like to do because this is where we first set up Troublesome 2. Now what I see a lot of runners do is basically turn around and do this charge along here. Now that will make you lose 4 seconds. But here's a trick. <coughs> 
the hits is about a trick that will um, make sure that you get it you know, nice and quick. So when you free Lyle, you get Spire to basically arrive back here. I then charge basically to Lyle, like the top of Lyle's platform. Turn 90 degrees to the right on the analog stick. Then charge. And then basically try and snipe it. Like by the very edge of the platform. Then jump up and then try and go around here. That would save you loads of time. Trying to, you know, mechanic your you know, dragon up around that way. Mechanic the dragon. I can't believe I said that. <laughs> he might give you the banana kappa. Ooh. <laughs> well there we go now I'm now that's unsafe for for copper compliancy right so anyway around that way and then it basically you charge up around there so if I go and get Lyle there skip Lyle charge at the front 90 degrees right at the edge there and then jump like around there be careful of those tiki torches those tiki torches are meanies big meanies and then you jump up Get that spring chest and then get Jed. Then with that, you go across to get these gems. Get the thief, because he's nice. Um if you arrive at Jed before the thief arrives, which you probably see me do quite a lot, I generally get to the platform and then turn around 180 degrees and snipe the thief. And then come around. Get all that all the gems and nice goodness. So that's the first of our troublesomes. Now I'm gonna try and teach you a lot how to do Keela. As soon as you get to here, you charge down, get that first chest. I'll then spay the flame to get all those gems, collect all of those. So now with this, I then go from the super charge. Um, um, collect these gems along here. And then what you'll do is you'll go past Isaac. But then what you do is you go across to the left, hug the wall as much as you can to try and lose a bit of Spyro's momentum. And then as soon as you get probably about halfway to that wall, Start then turning off to a very sharp right and then see if you can charge straight into the fireworks chest. Not fireworks, the um, key chest. Once you've done that, you've skipped the keys animation, you've saved yourself four seconds, and you probably may even still even have supercharge if you're lucky and try and get the two guys along the way. And then that'll basically save you, you know, having the whole key shenanigans. If you miss it, not a problem. Just means you have to sit through that, you know, that key and waste four seconds, but... Give a good practice at this. It's really, really essential. And what you then do, and as I said, is you arrive back here, fade flame, get that, jump, charge down, jump up to here, charge down to here, hug the wall, and then dark right. There you go, just like that. Then get these two gems here, and then come on. Bonk, 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 and get Isaac there. Skip Isaac. Now. To do this next section, I generally like to try and aim to arrive into that tree coming from the very sharp right. The reason why is because you can touch the tree, the touch the wall of the tree as soon as you got that indestructible chest. And lose all the spires momentum and hug and hold the supercharge as you're going down. Which allows you to get those spring chests really, really quick and flame the well, not even need to flame the guy that's at the bottom. I'll see if I can try and do that. If I don't do that, then, you know, it's not a problem. It just means you... By doing that, you'll probably save about three seconds. I think. Charge up down here. Jump at the very edge. Come from the right. Obviously, that wasn't good enough there because I went straight for the bunk. But I probably went a little bit to the right. Probably come down here and then get these quick. Flame that guy. Jump up here. Charge this guy. Flame. Jump that guy. Again, main thing with big enemies, just make sure you flame and then jump to get their gem as you got it. So, this is the second of Troublesome. Now, I think this is harder to do in 60, I feel. I'll give it a try. But what I do, as soon as I come up here, you go to the top of here. And when you get to about halfway down, when you're on, like, you take the right and then you swoop to the left... And then start turning from about here. And you want to jump from about here. Holding a very, very sharp right. As soon as you're doing that, Spyro will probably come back. If you're successful, he will land back onto the supercharge platform about here. And then you hold the supercharge. And then jump at the very top. And then you will successfully get to that. Get to where the thief is over there. Without needing, you know, having to do the whole route. If you're unsuccessful... Probably from trap from jumping off either too wide here or 
to chat about here you either will you know miss it and die there or you might miss it and end up at like this platform here and you have to do the whole thing if that's the case i would recommend try and you know redo it from here and then charge up the top again so i'll give it a try i'll probably give it a few tries because i know i've probably so many charge um from the left to the right probably gonna make this there we go jump again get that guy you can even snipe those chests if you want and then Stay flame mode. Come up around. Get these gems. Get these gems. Charge down here. Flame these two with one flame. This is this last bit's essential. With this last gem, what I, well last few gems, what I would do. Flame, 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 jump. Land on the two gem that the other gem come across. And yeah, T Cat's right. Charging at the at the start of it. Um Jumping at the start of it will make it much easier as well. And I know that's definitely a thing that happens in OG as well. Um, jumping and charging at the start. I'm going to give it another start there. Go across it. That's definitely going to work. Again, one more time. Visual sort of reference. Sorry, Light. How's your run going? Uh, terribly. Let me have a look. Also, I think Stu raided, and I apologise I didn't say anything. I didn't want to interrupt. And hello to everyone that joined. People like tutorial time compared to last time. Yeah, it's because last time, Jen, everyone was, um, there was that 120 community race going. See, this won't work. I knew that wasn't going to work. Because you basically have to get enough, again, modern video game physics. It's, they've cleverly put an angular momentum. In. Where, like, you know, you do accelerate kind of, like, lateral ways as well. It's really, really cool. Make sure you kind of go right toward the ends, up around there. That'll work. Right, I'm also going to give it a try in 60 as well. Just to, just to show the difference. That mushroom got in the way. Safe, I can read chat by the way. <laughs> gotcha. I feel bad though, like, if you get a PB this run, it's literally just me talking halfway through. <laughs> PB plus free tutorial. On the wrong category, on the wrong game. Comment below for a chance to win a free iPhone. <laughs> I know this is going on YouTube. Oh, <laughs> just, don't, don't listen. To, if that's Lightson's giveaway, okay? She's now committed no, to that. I didn't do a giveaway. It was a lie. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, and then once that's done, when you get to this final gem that's over here, I'm gonna go quick, change my graphics back to 30, and then exit level. That's treetops done. Coming near to the end of this um, run now. I've got a lot of levels. 
Then you charge straight out, get those one gems, jump up to this bit, and then as soon as you get the end, jump, glide to get into the metal thing. This is a video on how to get easy world record. Yes, Jojo. Yes. Now you can run Spyro Reignited 2. We need some corny music. And there goes my copyright strike. <laughs> <laughs> right, so... As soon as you enter um, Metalhead, what I do is I go straight for charging into the monkey, which is actually at the corner over here, and charging into all the monkeys that kind of, you know, get in the way. Then you go straight up to the top, flame the big monkey, let his jump, yeah, let his gem drop, but then get the two gems that are on the right, and then jump down, and then go for the, you know, going for the key. Show you that. Charge across. Bang, bang. Let the guy at the top, you know, die. Your his gem will home. I actually got an extra two. Uh, these gems are on the way. Bonk up these stairs. Bonk, 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 bonk. Charge, 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 charge. Again, from there, it's another 90 degrees to the right. Then get this key. If you want to get an extra 15 gems, you can get those chests down there. I don't normally go for them because my gem count here is quite all right. So I jump down here, go to this whirlwind. Charge across here, and then I missed that chest. Doesn't matter. Go across like that. So you charge straight down. Try and land onto that five gem that you flamed for earlier, and then charge along here. Flame this guy here. Miss the banana. Charge across here. Again, same with these these monkeys here. You charge straight into them because only two of them come down. I think one of them might home in his gem anyway. While doing so, though, make sure to flame uh, towards the left on the 90 degrees. Um, as soon, I think, as you get the first monkey or before you go up the stairs. I'll, I'll, I'll let my muscle memory do the talking in a moment. Um... Because then that will explode while you're going up to the top bit, and then you can get all those. How is it like to get time save? No, I missed a jump. Well, that was a good sigh there. Bad. I think I may reset. <laughs> I cry a little bit. Okay, it's so after the second month. Then what you do is flame, get this guy over here, get the gem that's around here. You want to be a little bit cheeky and get those two gems there. Get these lot. Sparks might even go for that butterfly if you're not in yellow, but that's fine. Charge, charge. Get these gems here. Uh, then what I do for these guys is charge into the monkeys. The first monkey might knock the chicken and die, which might be a bit weird, but that happens. Make sure to collect this five gem along the way. As soon as you get the two gems that's on the left, and then... You want to flame, like spay flame, going from the left to the right to getting those two. Charge around from the left to the right, and then you kind of position yourself in front of the, you know, the chargeable chest that's behind him. Flip the camera, and then charge straight through that. Aim for the monkey is about to throw a banana at you. So, this. Charge, charge. Spay flame, cross like that. Get them gems. Come around from here. Charge, charge, charge. Jump, charge from that, because you want to miss his banana. Come down here. Get... Sadiki. Cool. Get him from that. Then what you need to do, I've just let let the pylons do the talking now. Because this bit's quite awkward, to be honest. You just, it's just, you need to, with these two phases, the pylons, you just kind of just need to keep giving a go at them so you know where the patterns are. For the second pattern, it's a lot more nicer to predict. The first one's awful, though. But what you then do is, before you do the second pattern, you come up here. Flame, flame jump. I like to bring the camera up to this position, get these gems along here. And then charge down. Uh, if it doesn't happen, it's fine. Charge, get along around here. This bit along there. You don't need to worry about that monkey's gem unless you're doing 120. It's important, but if you're not, it's fine. See Metalhead's dead. He did the deaded. Turn around. Get these gems along here. Nice, yummy, yummy gems. Get the gem here. I'm up here. Yum, 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 yum. Here. Charge straight into these two. 
start exit. You'll probably be looking for around about 430 gems when leaving. And I keep an eye on gem count. For around about here, I'd say the good gem count would be around about... I'd say about 5,050. I'm, I'm already 40 gems over. I can't believe that. Probably because I've taken more time to make gems and stuff. So, as you saw there, try and get from this position. Flame the fan so it aims up and hits that Nork right on the head. And then his 10 gem will automatically home in. And flame. Get that one, doesn't matter. Get these gems on here. Bonk, bonk, bonk. On here, get these gems. Light down, get the key. Charge. Light down here, get these gems. Charge up on here. You can get this Nork, don't worry about the second Nork. Charge up around down here. Get these chests. Get all of them, would be quite nice. Get up to this key chest. Here, get all the gems. Now, there are two ways about doing this. You can either go from here, charge, jump at the very end, glide, and you can make this. Probably it's a little bit harder in 60. Or if you're not very comfortable doing this one, even though it's quite nice to do in 30, you can basically go up to this bit and then jump and then charge and glide along. Either way, it doesn't matter. It's about the same. And there you go. Leaving into Dreamweavers. And at this point, I'd say aim for about 5,170 gems when entering Dreamweavers. I'm already 30 gems over here. 